Well, welcome to the final component of our tutorial on the chemical senses. And in this part, we come to consider the trigeminal chemosensory system. So we continue to explore the complexity of the human brain through an analysis of some of the circuitry for sensation that's genetically determined and serves as the foundation for sensation, perception, sensory motor integration, and ultimately the behaviors that are stimulated or motivated by our sensory experiences. And we know that the chemical senses can be a very powerful motivator of behavior. What we come to in this part is a consideration of those chemical sensations around the region of the head and inside the head as well that can give rise to some kind of protective or avoidance response. So my learning objectives for this session are that I want you to be able to characterize the general organization of the trigeminal chemosensory system. And secondly, I want you to be able to discuss the sensory transduction mechanisms associated with polymodal C nociceptive fibers. You'll recall that we talked about these kinds of fibers more generally when we considered pain and temperature systems. In this brief segment of our tutorial, I want to focus on those polymodal C fibers associated with the trigeminal nerve that are intervening sensitive tissues in the head that allow us to respond to the presence of an irritating chemical substance in the environment or perhaps one that we ingest. So I'll just remind you of the distribution of the trigeminal nerve. Uh, these sensory axons associated with the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve 5, have cell bodies in a ganglion that sits in the base of the skull. Uh, the sensory axons grow out and innervate a variety of, fate, of uh, territories uh, in the face and within the head itself. And these branches of the trigeminal are basically organized into three principal divisions. There's an ophthalmic division, which we sometimes consider to be uh, V1, meaning the first or superior division of the trigeminal nerve, nerve 5. There's a maxillary division that we sometimes refer to as V2. And then finally, a mandibular division that we sometimes refer to as V3. So the distribution of these nerves is a bit beyond the scope of this course, uh, so I won't ask you to know in detail their peripheral structures, but I do want you to have a general sense that there is a distribution of the tri branches of the trigeminal nerve to these, these different zones of the face. So we can consider the ophthalmic region, the maxillary region, and then the mandibular region. So the ends of the axons that are of a concern for us are those that give rise to free nerve endings. So you'll recall that some subset of these axons are going to terminate as uh, free nerve endings and at the uh, ends of these axonal branches, we will find receptors that are part of this transient receptor potential family of receptors. We call these receptors trip channels uh, as a, just a shorthand, so transient receptor potential channels, or TRP for short, and they come in a large uh, variety of um, specific molecular species that are tuned for particular types of substances in the environment that might activate them. Some are sensitive to heat, to cold, some are sensitive to, to acids, to protons, others are sensitive to particular chemicals that might be found in the environment or in substances that we come in contact with or that we might actually ingest. One that's illustrated here is capsaicin. So capsaicin is the um, substance that is found in many of the hot and spicy foods that uh, many of us actually enjoy consuming. Well, capsaicin can interact with a binding site on the cytoplasmic side of some of these trip channels and can modulate the currents that then are gated through these channels. So when these channels open, uh, cations like calcium and sodium can enter the terminal end of this free nerve ending leading to a depolarization 
perhaps with the influx of calcium, the activation of second messenger systems that can further modify the response of this polymodal C fiber to the presence of these complex stimuli that might include some of these organic compounds in the foods that we eat or the uh, environments that we come in contact with. So sensory transduction then is about activation of these trip channels that will lead to depolarization of the terminal membrane and the generation of an action potential and potentially more complex uh, responses within the cell that are mediated by increased levels of calcium. Now I'll just remind you of the central processing of these trigeminal signals. So we're talking about the nociceptive division of the trigeminal nerve and its branches and these axons then are derived from ganglion cells that send a central process through the trigeminal nerve which then descends and forms the spinal trigeminal tract. The spinal trigeminal tract then synapses on second order neurons that are distributed just on the medial side of the tract called the spinal trigeminal nucleus and these cells grow an axon that crosses the midline and ascends through the tegmentum of the brainstem in a region nearby the anterolateral system axons and these um, second order pain fibers then terminate in the ventral posterior complex of the thalamus on the medial part of that complex, so our ventral posterior medial nucleus. And the third order neuron then is the one that relays signals from the thalamus on up to the appropriate location in the cortex. And when we're talking about representation of facial structures and oral structures, we're talking about the inferior third of the cortex and even down into that part of the parietal operculum that's buried in the depths of the lateral fissure. Now this pathway that I've just illustrated for you from peripheral nerve process to cortex will allow our interactions with potentially irritating substances either in our mouths or perhaps on our corneas or in the mucous membranes within our nasal epithelium. Uh, these interactions are processed at a conscious level but they are also integrated at a lower level of processing where appropriate motor responses are triggered in a reflexive sort of way. So, for example, what happens if one were to uh, sniff uh, ammonia salts? Well, a signal would very quickly enter the brainstem, synapse on the appropriate neurons in the spinal trigeminal nucleus. And in addition to the axon that projects on up into the thalamus, they are very likely are going to be local collaterals into networks of neurons that we associate with the core of the brainstem, something we call the reticular formation. Some of these neurons will very quickly integrate an appropriate motor response, uh, such as a cough or a sneeze. This is a coordinated visceral and somatic motor response to try to expel the irritating chemical. Well, perhaps the irritating chemical encounters the cornea or the conjunctival tissues around the margins of our globe, our eye. Well, these irritations will likewise enter the brainstem and interact with local circuits that coordinate an appropriate visceral motor response. In the case of corneal irritation, that response would be the tearing up uh, of the surface of the eye. And those tears will be an attempt to dilute and to wash away the presence of this noxious compound that's interacted with these peripheral surfaces. So my point here is that there is a rich set of local connections that engage brainstem circuits that can produce the appropriate visceral motor and somatic motor response that minimizes the damage that potentially might be done through the transduction of one of these potentially irritating chemicals. Well, I'll conclude uh, the chemical senses at this point, and there'll be a study question for you that uh, hopefully will help you integrate some of what you're learning. And uh, otherwise, uh, this is a bit of a juncture for us. We're concluding our survey of the chemical senses, and this will conclude unit three of the course. And we're ready to pivot and take on an understanding of the motor systems 
that are present within our brain and our spinal cord. So the neurobiological control of movement and motor control is the topic of Unit 4. So I look forward to seeing you on the other side of the Unit 3 quiz as we engage together to explore the motor systems of the brain and spinal cord.